So uh, what I want to present here today is some of the results from my postdoc research on the uh, technological choices in the early Natufian sequence at El Wad Terrace. Uh, the site is excavated by uh, the Zinman Institute in Haifa, in, in the University of Haifa, and by the co-authors of this uh, presentation. The Natufian is the last of the Epipaleolithic cultures. It comes, it marks the transition between the old Paleolithic world of hunter-gatherers and the agriculture and Neolithic villages, uh, the Neolithic agricultural villages that come after it. It is dated, uh, as you can see, to between 15,000 to 11,700 calibrated BP. It is usually divided to three late, sorry, early, late, and final. Uh, we find in, uh, in most of the sites, especially those from the Mediterranean ecological zone, uh, a very rich material culture that, include, um, that includes art objects, decorated bone tools, jewelry, grindstone tools, stone-built architecture. Uh, at the top left, you can see a reconstruction of a necklace made from bone pendants and dentalian beads. At the bottom, uh, uh, below it, a decorated bone tool, but found at El Wad Cave. Um, these are some examples of uh, the grand tools that we find. And below, you can see uh, the semicircular structure, which was found in, um, in El Wad Terrace. It is typical of this uh, phase in the Natufian, it is found in uh, other sites. Um, the site itself is located in Nachal Me'arot, in the coastal plain of Israel. It is part of the UNESCO site of Mount Carmel Caves that include Taboon and Jamal Cave, where lower to middle Paleolithic uh, sequence was found, and uh, El Wad Cave, where upper Paleolithic to upper Paleolithic find, uh, were found. Uh, El Wad Terrace uh, so far only has um, Natufian, but all the phases of the Natufian are represented there. Um, the early Natufian, which is what I worked on, is dated, uh, the Natufian at the site, is dated between uh, 14,950 to 13,195 Calbp, and it is considered to be one of the larger early Natufian base camps. Other uh, base camps include uh, Einan in the Khula Basin in Israel, Vadi Khama 27 in Jordan, uh, Hayanin Cave in Terrace in the Western Galilee of uh, Israel, it is considered, uh, the, or rather, these sites are considered to be uh, semi-sedentary uh, occupation sites. And uh, now for my research, you can see the, at uh, corn, the right corner the plan of the site. The two red uh, squares are those I worked on. The idea was to compare um, the area be, uh, inside the structure, 07, and the area immediately outside of it, 09. Uh, you can see at the table below the counts of each of these uh, squares. The methods I used are uh, based on, the, on my PhD research. The first is the attribute analysis. Uh, here I focused uh, on technological attributes. Uh, all assemblage components were uh, tested. The second one is, uh, I call it here a type of technological analysis, but what it is is a more detailed type of, te type of technological analysis. Only the cores and CTE were included here. Uh, the idea was, first of all, to divide uh, the cores and the CTE to the different types, and each of these types have a, re uh, a relevant uh, subtypes. For, for instance, for the single striking platform cores, the circumference of the striking platform, for opposed cores, the function of the second striking platform, whether it was a secondary one or whether it replaced the old striking platform. Uh, for the core trimming, core trimming elements, again, they were divided into types, and each of them uh, had the relevant subtypes. For instance, for the general CTE type, whether what part of the uh, core was maintained, whether it, the removal of the debitor surface or the striking platform. For the core tablets, whether the entire sucking platform was removed or only part of it. And the last uh, method is uh, only for the cores. Uh, I divided them according to uh, uh, theoretical uh, sequence. Uh, in the black, you can see uh, what I consider to be the classic uh, uh, 
sequence, classic stages in the sequence. In the red is uh, some of the results from my uh, PhD that I think are uh, uh, true also for Elwad. The main difference, I mean, the main difference between the more classical and what I found is that there is very little, if any, initial shaping. In, um, in most cases, the decortication occurred along the sequence and not only at the beginning. Uh, also, uh, in some cases, instead of removing core trimming elements, they simply added a new striking platform and started removing blank from there. Um, I wanted to focus here on three uh, issues only. As I said, it's only preliminary results. Uh, the first is on or off site napping. First, uh, in this graph, you see the uh, frequency of the primary elements within each level in each square. And I think what's, uh, what's most clear is while there isn't uh, t uh, any chronological trend along the sequence, uh, we can see there is a difference between the two squares. In 09, which is outside of the structure, we find more primary elements than inside of it, which is 07. Uh, the second uh, here. Um, is only the cores, and you can see that in, uh, first of all, in both squares, there is very little, if any, cores from initial, uh, from initial stages, uh, very few nodules, very few cores in uh, the stages of decortication. There is a difference between the, the two squares. In 09, we see more abandoned cores. In 07, more cores in initial stages of blank removal. Um, I think what uh, comes from this is, first of all, uh, perhaps we see a different function for each area, inside versus outside of the structure. Perhaps we have more napping outside of the structure. Uh, the cores uh, maybe showed us that um, there was more there was emphasis on bladed or blank production inside the structure, and perhaps the outside of the structure either was for napping or perhaps it was used as a dump area. Uh, the second subject is maintenance activity. Uh, first, the different, uh, the frequency of the different core trimming element types. Um, what is true for both squares and for most levels is that the most common is the general, general CTE type and the rarity of the ridge blade. The difference between the two squares is uh, the frequency of the core tablets, where in 07, the core tablets are more common than in 09. Uh, this is some of the results from the techno-typological analysis that I showed. Uh, to see that most of the core trimming elements uh, that we find are those that uh, removed the debitor surface, that cleaned the debitor <laughs> surface. But the second one is the removal of the, the second most common uh, activity is removal of the striking platform. And uh, again, perhaps we see a different, I'm sorry, just to say, that uh, there is a little bit of a difference between the squares in that in uh, 07 we find more, uh, a few more items, or rather a, a slightly higher frequency of, uh, of removal of the striking platform. Uh, so again, maybe we have uh, different functions that are performed outside and inside, an emphasis on maintenance more related to blank production inside the structure and a more general maintenance outside of it. Perhaps again, it is an example that uh, uh, evidence that we have a dump area outside of the structure. Finally, the uh, target blank is the uh, last issue that I'll show here. Um, Microlists, when you compare them to other tool groups such as burens and scrapers, uh, are more common. But uh, what I did here is that I only separated the larger tool groups and the microlith. And you can see that in most cases, the larger tools are more common, but there are a few uh, levels, all of them in, in, the, in 07, in square 07, where first of all, in the yellow, uh, they are nearly equal to the, um, to the larger tools. And in one square, sorry, in one level, 7A, we can see that the microliths are even more common uh, than, um, than the larger tools. The main difference between the squares is that uh, in 07, we, ha we found uh, that macrolists are more common than in the second square, in the other one. Um, <coughs> now, uh, when you compare the portion, or the frequency of bladelets in the debitage and the microliths within the tools, microliths are uh, 
are a larger portion of the tool assemblage than the bladelets of the debitage. The main difference between the squares is that um, in 07 we see a higher bladelet component as well as microlith uh, within each uh, assemblage. Um, but the differences between 07 and 09 are not that uh, large. There is some difference between levels, but they don't seem to have any chronological trend. Or uh, it's basically that in, uh, for instance, in level 7a, we see that microliths are, have a very high frequency, while bladelets very low one. And in uh, level 8b, the, both microliths and bladelets are very low. But there, there isn't a clear uh, trend here, and it's true for, uh, I think, many of the aspects uh, that I tested. Uh, the levels are rather similar. OK, finishing a second. Um, but there is, but the difference between the squares is a little uh, stronger. So to conclude, um, while the assemblage's size from the inside and outside of the structure is more or less similar in terms of how many items, the type, the typology, uh, different uh, core types and whatever, it is similar. Also, in both cases, microlith is the, seems to be the target blanks. But uh, there are a few special differences. First is an emphasis on production of bladelets and disposal, perhaps disposal of bladelet tools inside the structure. Uh, and on the outside, uh, maybe it functioned as a damp area, or maybe it functioned as a more general uh, napping area uh, of the site. And uh, finally, what I want to uh, study in my, uh, what I, I hope to, to get from, uh, from this assemblage is first of all uh, to talk about raw material selection. I mean, I already, I already know for now that um, we have mainly one raw material type. It is a local raw material type that was used nearly for uh, uh, all tools. All the assemb I think the assemblage is composed mostly of that uh, raw material. It is good quality, but still, uh, I'm not sure that preference, raw material preference is really an issue. Uh, manner of exploitation, um, uh, abandonment of the core, I think, is uh, because uh, in most descriptions of Natufian assemblages, uh, core, uh, it was described that most of the cores are abandoned. And I think that uh, perhaps how we define it, uh, abandoned cores, perhaps is uh, not exactly uh, the case when you, when you look at the cores more, uh, in a more detailed uh, analysis. Uh, and fin finally, we, we, do we see any functional differences or typological differences along the time and between the areas? Uh, finally, the bigger, perhaps the bigger uh, picture is the gar garbage crisis of the Natufian that I hope this research might uh, shed some, at least, uh, small light on this subject. Um, we see inside of the structure and outside of the structure, we have uh, a very large uh, amount of items. and. There doesn't seem to be a difference uh, whether it's inside or outside. They don't seem to have any uh, organization of the space. They didn't clean the area. They can, it is true also for faunal remains. <coughs> they don't seem to clean the area uh, of the inside of the structure. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, this anal my analysis will perhaps uh, show something. I think already. Uh, maybe we see a little difference between uh, activities inside and outside. I hope it will become more uh, clear when I finish. And um, since I haven't shown you a single tool from this period, I thought that I'll finish it with this. And uh, that's it. Thank you.